Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Yes, and um, uh, I know where I am and who I am, I think. <laughs> um, a little bit quaking in my boots today because I'm going to attempt to do a tutorial on how I made this little, very easy to make uh, pouch to hold my stencils, my smaller stencils anyway. Um, and I've been asked for this, so I thought I would just uh, show you a quick video on how to do that. Uh, I use a magazine and two pieces of material and, uh, you know, that you can take it from there. But that's basically it. Very easy, very simple. And I am the world's worst seamstress. So if uh, you do have a um, sewing machine and you're a little timid to use it, this might be an easy project for you. Also, if you don't have a sewing machine, you could hand sew the sides. It's not that much sewing. It's zip zip basically and you're done. Um, it, it could be whittled through. You could, you know, whip stitch it around. I think that's what it's called. Um, seamstress, just feel free to jump in. And um, I hear you cringing and your toes curling with everything that is about to come before you now. Just uh, be gentle. <laughs> No, actually, give uh, please share all your tips and tricks that would make life easier for all of us because uh, many of us are uh, learning and um, that that's what this is all about. So here we go. Um, OK, so uh, you could also I you know, this is heavy. Honestly, the, these are just little plastic sheets. But when you put a bunch of them together, they're heavy. This could also be used to store embellishments and things like that, like pre-mades um, that might be handy. Um, they might not be so heavy, but this has some weight to it. Uh, so you want some strong um, adherence on the side. Glue, I think might not be the best. Um, it might give way over time, even fabric glue, just because there's so much, um, uh, pressure on the sides as you're pulling it open to look for stuff and rumple, you know, like that kind of stuff, you know, the excited crafter in you gets in there. Um, like a little ferret looking around. Um, this little ferret is sometimes not gentle with her toys. Okay. So, uh, I would recommend sewing. I would recommend zigzag stitch and I would recommend, um, like plan B might be stapling. Okay. Lots of staples and then maybe covering it with uh, a piece of material or something here that you glue on to make it look pretty. Um, that might be an opportunity, an idea, uh, because the backs of the staples here, you might catch with your fingers or papers or you don't want that. You want it to be smooth and easy to grab. Um, you could glue, but I just think the even the strongest glue might fail just because there's too much movement. Okay. So that's that. Um, all right. Uh, so basically what you need to do, let me just back up a little bit. All right. Okay. Um, is you need two pieces of material and I, this material, it looks like needlepoint material, but I think it was actually a, a napkin or a placemat. There were, I think a set of four of them and they were square. I don't know what they were. I got them at Goodwill for next to nothing. And I never figured out what I was going to do with them, but I thought, oh, this is good. You know why? Um, I recommend non-stretchy fabric, at least on the outside, because when you go to pick up something heavy, you don't want the fabric sliding and like bunching up here. You know, if you used a t-shirt or something like that, it might have too much stretch. So I would say go into your closet, fair it around, find something that you don't like or you don't wear and you know, you're thinking, eh, you know, uh, but you like the material and get something maybe made out of a linen or a tight woven cotton, something like that, that is not going to slide. Okay, there we go. Or a bunch. Uh, so what I had, uh, this is another uh, purchase from Goodwill from a, a long time back and um, I really want to use it. Hi, Holly. Good morning, sunshine. Uh, take a sip of my coffee. Yep, be prepared. I've had coffee this morning. <laughs> okay. Um, this is upholstery material. You don't need to use upholstery material, but it's definitely non-stretch. That's what, and I had it. So there you go. That's why I have it. And basically you want to cut out two pieces that are bigger. Oh, we're going to use a magazine. All right. And I got this magazine in the mail. I call it junk mail. And if you want to know the size of this particular magazine, this one is about 10 and three quarters by eight and a quarter, but you, you can make these any size. They just have to accommodate your stencils or whatever you're going to put inside of here. Okay. So this one, you know, I just went with what, what it was and uh, that was just easy. I didn't have to cut anything. So um, find your middle and then lay your fabric down. And uh, I would say when you're cutting out your fabric, cut out at least two inches bigger on the bottom. And on the top, or at least an inch and a half, two inches bigger, give yourself some wiggle room, okay? Um, an inch might be too small because we're going to do some trimming. 
and I just want you to have lots of uh, extra to trim off so you're not uh, uh, fearful in the end. And uh, we don't want fearful. No, we want fun, not fearful. Okay, <laughs> uh, so you have two pieces. I just used the one piece as the template to cut out the other one. Or you could actually cut them out at the same time, which would give them the exact same shape, which is probably smarter in seamstress world. Um, okay, now you can cut these with fabric scissors, regular straight cut. You can use pinking shears, which are the zigzag cut. Okay, or you could use the rotary cutter fabric cutter with a, with a ruler, the steel. And these also come with pinking edges. Um, but I'm, I don't know if everybody has all this stuff, so I'm just gonna put that aside. And I just, I used pinking shears, number one, because I've read and heard in the, in the trenches that the, huh, it's a straight cut edge, that's interesting. Um, the, the pinked edge, the zigzag cut, will unravel less than a straight cut. So I thought that sounded good. So I went with that. And uh, now this, edge at the top just happens to be there's a fancy word for this and I know that the seamstresses will let me know what it is it's like the um, oh, I can't think of it. it's like the surged edge or the finished edge or it's like basically that edge you know on the upholstery fabric that's all like that's where it, they started or something um, normally it's kind of um, funky looking but this one is actually kind of cute it's got a little fringe on it so I might keep that but this one I did not have that and I just uh, cut it off and then to cover that I just, I literally glued a piece of uh, uh, fabric trim on it just to give it a pretty edge. And so I didn't have to fuss and deal with it too much. This was more utilitarian uh, than, but I just wanted to make it a little pretty and use up my fabrics and try and train myself how to sew. Okay, so there we go. Um, all right, back on the trenches here. Okay, so we have this now. Um, I think it would probably be a good idea to, I don't think you have to glue every page together, but if you put something on here that will stick this to the fabric, um, then you're going to have less run around. And, and sometimes that makes life a lot easier in the, the, the sewing world, I have found. You don't want run around. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to try and line those up so that's where they were. See, I, I cut them at separate times. That's why they're like that. So that's probably not the best idea. If you cut them at the same time, it's a little thick with a poultry, poultry fabric. All right. So let's put something down here. Now, I could use multiple things. Um, I could use Fabrifix. Clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. Very good. Um, minimal, barely will seep through your fabric, especially if it's thick, thick fabric, you don't have to worry about it too much. If it's a super thin fabric, you might get some bleed through. So you probably want to take finger tool and smear the beads down so it's not like big dollops and it doesn't soak through. So now I have to make the big decision of what's going to be the outside color, what's going to be the inside color of my fabric. Uh, now, I'm thinking I'm going to do the darker color on the outside because I'm, I'm thinking in my world, these fingers get inky. And when I'm grabbing and picking up over and over, it's going to get dirty. Now, the first one I made when I wasn't thinking yet was white. Yes, mostly white. And there are, I can honestly say, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there are some little inky areas that have shown up because of, you know, my lifestyle. <laughs> but uh, so anyway... I'm going to use this dark color as the outside. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so you're going to be on the outside. All right. So, okay. You're going to be on the outside. Yes, you are. Okay. All right. So that means that I need to make a sandwich. So face down for the outside. Okay. Then I'm going to put my magazine here. I've opened it to the middle and now I'm just going to put some sort of glue. I could even use glue stick. Um, it doesn't matter. But I think I'm going to use Fabrifix just because... It, um, oh, where's my fabric fix? Okay, okay. Um, I know it's gonna stick, so I don't have to worry about run around. You know what, run around. Okay, just gonna do a thin bead. I put this in the Sugar Bell icing piping bottle thingy. Um, link on Amazon if you're interested. Uh, it just gives me a thinner glue bead um, than the fabric fix bottle, so my glue lasts a little longer. That's why I do that. So, okay, here we go. Placing, placing, trying to somehow get it lined up maybe move a little closer to the top oh i don't know about that whole fringe thing that whole fringe thing is going to go who are we kidding that's going to come right off all right we're snuggling back down because that's not going to work okay because i got to sew it together okay right because that's not officially the top that's the side okay so putting down putting down okay so we have that all right hey 
Yeah, no, that wasn't so bad, right? Okay, so now I'm going to take this. And like I said, I'm quaking in my boots a little here because I made that a long time ago. I'm trying to remember how I made it. Um, this one's going to go on the inside. So I think I'm going to put this material on the inside. So I'm going to take my fabric fix my clear liquid silicone glue. I'm just going to put some little glue beads just to get it to not travel while I'm picking it up and sewing it and stuff like that. All right. Okay. So this is the color I want on the inside. Gonna try and line that up with that. I don't know why, but I am. I'll make sure that I'm over far enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one is a little smaller. Okay. And then I'm, oh, something's folding funny here. All right. There we go. All right. All right, now, pressing, pressing, and uh, there, that looks pretty good so far, right? Now all we have to do is get it all together. Um, so I'm not going to do any trimming yet. I'm going to zigzag sew it first, and this is what I did on this one, and I'm not sure 100% why, but I think it, 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 I just did it this way because it was easier for me to follow the bump. When you have the magazine in here, you're going to feel a little edge, and I used that edge as a guide. And I use that to sew my straight line, okay? And then there's one across the top, one across the bottom, and run across this way. Now, as I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking I could go sewing all the way around. Let me see, see how many times I sewed this. Going in close, zooming in so you can see what I actually did. Can't see squat there. Okay, I see the zigzag stitch there, and I see I only zigzag stitched once. Okay, so that means that I took this backing out so you can see, and I folded it in half. Yes, I did. Yes. Now, apparently there's some kind of two color tone thing here. I'm not gonna worry about that because we're this far into it and we're just carrying on. So this is actually gonna be my top, okay? And uh, just wanna make sure everybody's nice and flat. And you can always pin it or clip it or something like that. Probably should. Um, Keep everything from translating but what the magazine is going to do is it's going to give your um, pouch structure and it was just a very easy thing if you don't have I think it's called Pellon or um, those fabric thingies you can use those uh, uh, th uh, special I have any close by I can show you but it's basically like white um, felty sort of stuff that you put inside not really felty stuff but uh, Pellon I think it's called as a brand um, for structure, but it's kind of expensive. And I thought, well, what, you know, this is only to hold stencils. Why, why, why do I need that fancy stuff? I don't need that. I don't need that. Um, okay. But what I'm looking for mostly right now is translation. Am I getting translation? And I think I'm either going to pin, I'm getting a little translation, not liking the translation. Um, just going to clamp these together. If you haven't seen these, I'm going to, I'm going to put the, a link for these down below. Um, these are, it, I use these in place of pins. These just keep your projects in one spot so they don't run around you don't have to fuss with a pin or get stabbed with a pin or um, any of that stuff it's good for the edges mm -hmm. and uh, just keeps everything together you could pin you could not pin and you could just do it um, I'm just gonna do this because I want it to come out square all right okay I flop her over I don't know how close we are to the top and keep everything square all right, and just put a couple more of these. Oh, yucky pants. This might be more than one video. Um, okay, so just at the end, if it rolls over and I just like stop talking or you know get cut off and we go into the uh, YouTube abyss of nothingness, there's probably part two. And I will put a link below the video to part one and part two so you can find them easily. And I'll, and I'll put a link at the end of the video linking to part two so you can find it. Um, we, we, I don't, I don't want to rush. I don't want to rush you or me in this process. Um, I just want to have a nice time making this funny little gizmo thingy. Okay, so there we go. We have the book in the middle, and we have the outer fabric, and we have the inner fabric, and everybody's staying still. Let me swing you over to the sewing machine. Hang on, I'm just going to reset up my camera. I don't want to make you seasick. Hold on. Okay, here's my camera, and... Uh, Here's me attempting to sew. Yeah, here we go. Turning on the, the sewing machine. Remember, you can probably get a sewing or used sewing machine for about 20 bucks at Goodwill. And um, so if you're timid about it or you don't want to use your fancy machine for paper, I, I get that. Okay, so now we got to decide wh where we're going to sew. I'm just going to pick a side. Here's a side. Uh, no, wait a minute. 
we want to sew it together. Right, yeah, put it back. <laughs> oh wait, no, you know what? I think we want to sew the tops first. Yes, let's do that. We're going to sew the tops first and then we're going to sew the sides together because we want the tops sewn. So I'm going to turn this on its side. Oops, sorry, knocked ya. And I'm going to slide it in there. Oh, I got to lift up my needle. Okay, first things first, Missy. I don't even know what um, threads are in here. It looks like blue and brown. Um, we're just going with it. And I'm feeling the edge of my magazine. Okay, I can feel the corner. So I'm just going to plop her down maybe before the magazine a bit. And I'm going to use my magazine to line up with where the middle is um, on my machine. Oh, no, i got to change it to a zigzag. On mine, it's number four. And maybe I want to do a wider zigzag. Okay, I'll do a, a wider zigzag. So I changed it to 5.0 wide, like the stitches will be wi wider like that, because um, I think it'll grab them better. And now I'm just going to start and see what happens. Okay. And uh, you know, you don't actually have to get the magazine. You can actually sew beside the magazine because this is going to snuggle the magazine in place. It should not translate because it's um, sewn right beside it. That's my theory. Uh, or you could sew right through the magazine and that's okay too because I'm probably doing both right now because I can't sew a straight line for worth beans. All right. Oh, okay. Now you want to very carefully remove that because that might interrupt with this and you want, don't want to hit your fingers and stuff. So get that out of there and uh, carry on. Okay. All right. I'm going to sew a little faster because I'm feeling bold. You don't have to sew fast. I'm just going for it. All right. Feel free to fast forward me or something because I am going to show you everything here and if you're like bored to tears I get it. Seamsters are like yeah we know how to zigzag pan please. Really please. Um, okay now what am I doing here? Pay attention. Okay so that's the top. I'm going to sew right off the edge. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sew right off the edge. Maybe. All right I'm just going to sew right off the edge. Here I go. Right off the edge so I don't have to worry about it. Okay and you can back and forth and all that stuff but yeah. Um, all right, lift that up, open that, snip, and we're free. Okay, so now I want to do the same thing on the other thing. So when I when I fold it together, I'm going to show you. I've sewn the top. Now I want to sew the other side for the top. Same thing. All right, here we go. And uh, getting in there, feeling my little magazine edge, and I'm I'm zigzagging. Now remember, zigzag prevents unraveling of material. So it's very useful to know how to do the zigzag. And the zigzag, whatever machine you use, probably has a zigzag. I would imagine most come with straight stitch and zigzag at a bare minimum, unless it's a super old machine or something and you just got straight stitch. But you could always do two straight stitches if you don't have zigzag. And you could like crisscross your straight stitches and make them anchor a little bit more. I don't know, I'm getting fancy here, I'm talking. I'm talking about things I really know nothing about, so I'm going to back away. Okay, I'm going to remove this now because it's going to be in the way. I'm just going to sew right off the edge. Here I go. And I'm off. Okay. All right. Yes, I should probably go back and forth there to anchor it, but I didn't. Um, okay. Bad habit. Bad sewer habits. I know. Okay, so this is good. All right, not bad so far. All I did was sew the top. Let me back you out a bit so you can, you can see. I sewed the top, and I sewed the top. This is my inside. This is my outside. Okay, now I'm going to put my insides together and I'm going to... Now the magazine has a natural fold, a natural spine. I'm going to use that. Now I'm just going to zigzag the sides. So here's my... my this is the upright. Here's my tops. I'm going to zigzag down here and I'm going to zigzag down here. Okay. Boy, this is like... <laughs> Howdy doody trying to demonstrate how to sew. Okay, this is getting a little thick. I hope my little needle will, will like this. We'll find out very soon. I'm not going to sew through the magazine too because that's going to be too thick. My needle's going to choke and I don't want to break my needle. So I'm going to not sew the magazine and I can come a little like beside it. And the foot will feel where the edge is and I can feel where the edge is. Okay, wait, 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 wait. make sure this is all lined up. Okay. Okay, here we go. And slow it first. Make sure everybody's not even, I'm not even moving. Okay, get in there. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna pull this a little. Probably not supposed to do that. All right, here we go. 
So it might be good not to use too thick of a material because you don't want your sewing machine choking up on you. Um, hmm. oh, stop and take that out. That was probably should have come out already. Just go along the side. I hope I'm going straight. I have no idea. I can see the edge. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. Okay, these are not lined up anymore. I don't know why. We'll see what happens. All right, here we go. It's tense, it's nerve wracking. I feel like Howard Cosell. And what's gonna happen? No, oh, something's not right. Something's, is it right? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it does not, not feel like totally right. Um, probably should have clipped these together to make sure that my, oh yeah, no, it's actually okay. Yeah, the zigzag stitches match up to some level because we want the tops to be the same. Yes, this is the classic class on how to wing it. Ouch, with the sewing machine. Don't stick your finger in there. <laughs> Don't do anything I do. Watch a hundred other videos first. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> hmm. Well, that's a different stitch, isn't it? I don't know why that happened. Did I get, oh, I got zigzag on this side. All right, not the best zigzag, but I got one. Um, all right, now I'm gonna go do this side. All right, so. But it is feeling snug in there, which is, that's really what I want. So I guess I'm going to go from the top down this time. And uh, just because I think it's easier. All right, here we go. And got my little threadies out of the way. Putting my little foot down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm sewing. I'm sewing. I'm sewing. Okay. And we're coming down the home stretch. And life should be really good because... Most of the sewing is done, we're happy, and we should have a pouch that has an opening at the top if I did this right. I think this is gonna be a pretty big pouch, which is good. I think this pouch is definitely bigger than the other one. Nope, oh, 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 I should have removed that. Okay, don't forget to take those off. Okay, here we go. Can you wanna see closer? I'll take you closer. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go, and we're off. And, you know, if really what you should do, okay, off back up a little bit you hit the reverse button i don't you can't see it there um see me move my thumb on the reverse button i don't know where your reverse button is but reverse a couple and then go forward again and that should lock that stitch in and that's probably the proper way to do it and so that really you should do that all the time yes never without that all right since i didn't do that here maybe i'll just back stitch here a little bit because what lazy pants of me lazy pants okay going in so you can go back in and do a little bit more. Oh, can't get it in there. All right, go okay. Oh, okay. And now back it up, back it up. And we're off. Okay, that's good. Now we're all locked in there. Okay. We won't worry about the tops. I think it's going to be okay. All right, I got all the clips off. I don't need them anymore. And let me um, swing you back around the other side so I can get a better view and we'll do some trimming. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm back. And uh, so what I, do I have? I've sewn solidly down the sides and I have an opening here. So pretty much I am done. I just have to trim and uh, just decorate at, at will. So let me just, uh, I'm going to grab my, this is where the pinkers are really important when you're doing this final cut because we are going to have a pinking edge, a zigzag edge, plus a zigzag stitch. So unraveling is uh, very low on the totem pole. Uh, it's thick. All right, don't use such thick material on the inside. Yeah, I would not recommend that. I used a thinner material on the other one. So, yes, all my plans of mice and men. My mice have been running for the streets, and my men are gone. <laughs> Where are the men? Um, okay. All right. That's thick. Maybe I'm going to have to do them one at a time. All right, what not to do by Pam at the Paper Outpost. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do one at a time. It would be better if I could do two at a time, but apparently I'm doing one because I can't, I can't I cut there. Okay. No? Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Maybe it's just bunching up. Probably a, a classic case of bunching. This should be really much easier. I'm making this way more dramatic than it is. Basically, you're sewing a pouch. It's not that hard. It's not. Um, at least I thought it was not. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. All right, stay, follow the line, Pam, follow the line. All right, mm, too thick there, okay. Mm, okay, we're getting it off. Let's go from this side. I don't know why this, oh, it's it's that way over there too. Huh, that funny little stitching. Who knew? 
I don't know what that. Okay, who knows? In the seamstress world, my 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 zigzag came out straight, stitching on the back like these little sideways stitches. But here, it came out like that. Well, let's look on the inside. No, it's zig. No, we got the sideways. St oh, you know, it's probably something to do with tension. Yeah, it's always tension. We don't know what the problem is. It's tension. Yeah. Let's see, what do I got my tension set on? Three and a half. I read somewhere once that three and a half is a good number. When you don't know what to do with the tension, do three and a half. But maybe if it's you're working with thicker fabric, maybe it does make a difference. Hmm? How about that? Okay. There. Okay. Almost. Almost. Oh, lordy me. Okay. There. Okay. Got one side off. Get rid of these little strings. Oops. Throwing things. Lost one of those. Okay, now... We're gonna do the same thing. Boy, that wasn't straight. We're gonna do the same thing and just cut down here like it's easy town. Mm hmm Yep. Maybe one layer at a time because apparently we cut one layer at a time. Uh, should probably use one of those fabric roller thingies to cut it because then you can cut through multiple layers at once, which would be smart, but then I'd have to pull that thing out and set it up and all that. <laughs> I just don't want to do that right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh yeah, see when you go through one layer it's not bad. When you try to do the multi-layers that's when yeah it gets all choky on itself. Okay, I'm cutting, cutting. There goes my pretty little fabric trim and I think I will save that on this surged finished edge of some other name I'm sure. Okay, oh no, choking. Okay, what am I doing? Okay, let's try the bottom. All right. Oh, come on, baby. Cut for mama. Cut for mama. All right. This is the worst sewing video ever. I completely acknowledge that. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you how to make a pouch. Um, if you know what you're doing, it's so much easier. Okay, so that's not too bad, right? Okay. So let's try that darn thing. Okay, if you want to be bold and get one of these babies, this might be for paper. I don't know. Is that for only fabric? I don't know. Let's try it. I should put the zigzag one in. Oop, I just lost a pin. Um, okay, I want to be at least there, at least there. Go above. Just for uh, expediency here, I'm going to try and... Uh, here, so you can see everything. I'm going to line it up. Now, you should probably square this off. That would be smart. Square. I'm aligning it with a line, aligning it on the bottom. And then when I aligned this side, let's say I'm going to use the little middle dots there and the square. Oh, you can't see that. Oh, boop. There. Um, boop. There's little dots indicating the half inch thingy. Um, and I'm going to line them up. Nope, I've got to line them up a little further this way, almost to the line of the 12. The 12 is this black line here that's running. Can't see any of that. Pick up, bam. Yeah, there's the 12. And there's a black line, and I'm lining it up here and there. Hopefully, this will be straight. Now, I've heard you have to cut away from yourself, or Armageddon will happen. I think you will cut yourself, and we don't want that. Although, I have a question on that. Why can I pull a craft knife towards me, but not this thing? I guess this thing might jump over the ruler, and you might just, like, run it might run away on you. Okay, so be safe. Cut away. Away. See, I am learning. It's slow. Um, kind of like a molasses process here, but I am learning. Oh, I can't see that. Okay, there we go. Okay, away. Away. Okay. Ah, okay. So, no, yeah, I did a nice straight top. I have no zigzag stitch, but you know, that's what I got today. And uh, <laughs> maybe you could do it with the zigzag stitch um, or the zigzag cut. Uh, but I think I will put a border on the top, which will get reinforce this. And it will also um, strengthen and reinforce that by just putting a little piece of material or fabric trim or something like that up there to hide the raw edge. And uh, OK, so let me go grab that. Okay, and if I was a really smart seamstress, I would have sewed this on before I even sewed everything together. But since I don't have my act together, I am going to glue it on after the fact, which is, um, there's nothing wrong with that, and nobody should be embarrassed about that. It is okay to glue fabric and uh, 
um, you can hold your head high and carry on in life because then you can get onto another project. So here we go. Um, just, I think I got this at uh, maybe the Dollar Tree, maybe eBay or AliExpress or something like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna glue some here, maybe cut a piece a little longer so I can decide whether I wanna trim it or not. Not sure yet. Might even wanna put a looper there or something, but doesn't that look pretty? That looks pretty, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. So, um, get some Fabrifix. Fabrifix, and oh, people ask this about this all the time. As far as my understanding, I did some research a long time ago. Fabrifix and Fabri-Tac and Beacon 3-in-1 glue are all made by Beacon. And I've used all of them and I have not noticed a perceivable difference at all. And I, I found some research that said the reason they have different names is because of where they're sold. Like they're sold at Hobby Lobby or Walmart or Joanne's Craft or something like that. That will change the name of it. I have no confirmation of that. That's just what I read somewhere, somewhere on, you know, you know, Dr. Google. Um, but uh, yeah, I found no difference. Uh, so you might um, just want to use what you can find in your area. But so far it's been very reliable stuff. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, just maybe just pop it off a little over the top, not much, but just a little. Okay, and there, there. I mean, there is something to be said about gluing. You know, I mean, you're done. You know what I mean? You're just done, and there's no fuss fuss. Okay, I'll just get that back there. Okay, a little shorter. Okay, all right. So I have that, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side because I think it would just make it look prettier. And uh, yep, I oh. Okay, if I get this done, this will be one video. All right, get in there and glue it, Pam. If I can get it, I think it never, it, sometime between 31 minutes and 33 minutes, I just get lopped off. So uh, welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much for coming aboard. Um, if you're looking for any links, they're down below in the description box and you'll find links to um, my Amazon store if you're looking for supplies. I try and put things that I use in my videos down there in case you're looking for them. Also, um, or if you can't find something, let me know and I'll see if I can find it for you. And uh, um, what else? Oh, oh, I have vintage digital kits. If you like to uh, play with digital kits and print them out and use uh, pretty uh, vintage papers and things like that for your junk journals. I have an Etsy shop and the link is down below as well. <coughs> Excuse me. My videos come out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, and uh, my podcasts, which are junk journal related. They're just audio, and they're free to listen to. They come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, and um, all the links for everything, again, are down below. And uh, uh, I have a free newsletter. If you want to come and sign up for that, you get a emailed newsletter monthly, and you get a free digital image with that, plus uh, some tips and tricks on uh, making junk journals, and uh, there you go. So um, I want to show you this now. You could also cover this if you want to cover that. Oh yeah, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna be changing soon. So what we have, we have our pouch. Instant, done, ready, strong. It has structure. You can be, use it for multiple things, stencils or embellishments, okay? Or um, what have you not. So if you wanna make a quick and easy uh, uh, pouch out of a magazine and some material, there you go, folks. Have fun, take care.